post coding static website we'll talk about transfer accelerator what is a transfer accelerator as i said we have a privilege of giving a public access of s3 bucket globally so how would the people access our bucket would they be logging into an aws service and log and accessing it no we cannot have that privilege instead they would be accessing through url the way we access google drive or sharepoint to have that enabled we have a privilege to go ahead with transfer accelerator transfer accelerator not just gives you a privilege to use url but also gives you a privilege of increasing the latency of transaction that means the normal speed of upload while you do it on s3 bucket is not that fast the way you do in transfer accelerator transfer accelerator makes your transfer of data from local system to cloud much more faster how all you need to do is go here and enable transfer acceleration you need to enable it and at certain point of time the end point that you see here will get enabled and that end point is where you have to use instead of bucket to upload a file or download a file we can compare the speed of transaction or the difference or we can compare the difference between the normal upload and the S3 transfer accelerator upload. So here we can see the normal uploads, S3 direct upload, and post which we can see an accelerated upload. The internet will glitch. We can see there's a space. Now we'll see that in OHIO region, in this availability zone, what's the difference between the transfer? There's a network fluctuation and it's 39% faster. 39% increase in a latency is way more than what your direct upload gives you. It gives a performance betterment while you're working in an industry. The next point that we'll talk about is life cycle management. What is a life cycle? Life cycle means the time when the data has been uploaded to the time when the data, data gets deleted. And the entire transaction between that formation and deletion is known as life cycle. Is it required to be managed? Yes, it is required to be managed. Why? In a block, we pre allocate and start using it. So at least we have an alarming situation where the 90% data has been used, storage has been used, we can go for housekeeping. However, since I said S3 is unlimited storage, we'll never realize what is the amount of storage that has been consumed and end up paying a good amount of money. To avoid that, we have a privilege to enable life cycle, wherein a retention period is defined and post the retention period, the data gets deleted on its own. So we need to identify what data is to be deleted, what data is not to be deleted. And we need to create a bucket where life cycle management has been enabled. We have two privileges, in transit and expiration. In transit again is of two types. One is frequent to infrequent. What does that mean? When we upload a data in a storage, storage is logically divided into two sections. One is frequent, one is infrequent. Frequent means the data which is accessed more. Infrequent means a location where data is accessed normally. So, if in case we enable life cycle management as part of in transit, at certain point of time we are explicitly defining move this data from frequent to infrequent, through which we get a benefit of other transaction not getting hampered because of the old data. The next one is expiration. Expiration means will define a retention period and after that retention period is completed, the data will get deleted on its own without you pitching. How do we define that? So, we'll come back to the bucket. We'll click on management, we'll click on life cycle, add life cycle rules, define the life cycle name, my rule, and a prefix which defines that this is related to your life cycle management. Do you want to do it for current version or previous version? Let's do it for previous version. You get an option to add transition. You define whether you want to do for standard transition or not and you have to define the retention period. If you do not want to do it, just close it and go for expiration. 